Magic stems from nature. It is in the earth we walk upon, in the fire burning in its heart, in the air we breathe, and in the water which brings life and which flows within us. Magic in the Witcher universe is very mystical. It's hard to quantify and is grounded more in philosophy and art than in science. Yes, it may lead to progress, but the power is so unknown to even the most knowledgeable scholars that it is often treated more as a wonder than a tappable resource. Maybe that explains the unusual reception it receives in the world. More religious folk, usually those without the ability to access magic, look at it with disdain. Take the Church of the Eternal Fire and their witch hunters. They despise magic and consider it a form of heresy or blasphemy. Whereas from those who use magic, it is described with reverence and used with care and ample respect. Take the sorcerer Istrid, for example, who makes his first appearance in the book Sword of Destiny. When Geralt questions him about his study, overflowing with mouldy skulls, rusty ironware, bulky tomes, and even rows of jars containing every conceivable abomination pickled for longevity, Istrid says, It is a matter of taste, and also of habit. What disgusts one person somehow doesn't bother another. Yet in this world where magic is so misunderstood, there seems to be one thing that every mortal is in agreement on. You do not mess with necromancy. Hey guys, my name is Drew, and welcome back to my Witcher lore and mythology series. Today I'm going to delve into a more speculative topic. This is a subject we don't have tons of information on, but the few times we see it rear up in the Witcher world, it is always surrounded by much despair. I'm of course referring to necromancy. When you think of necromancy, you may think of the Elder Scrolls. On Tamriel, the black arts are definitely taboo, but the themes are dealt with in a much less sinister way, and it is quite easy to view it as just another form of conjuration. However, in The Witcher, necromancy brings nothing but trouble, and the few times we see it in practice, it is enough to leave us seriously perturbed. So let's get straight into it by asking what exactly is necromancy in The Witcher universe? Necromancy is a subclass of magic which is aimed at casting spells on the dead, whether to reanimate a corpse temporarily or to relive a dead man's last moments, and so forth. Our understanding of necromancy in the Witcher world almost entirely comes from precedent. There are three distinct scenarios in which a protagonist is involved with necromancy. There is also one book written on the topic called Necromancy the Forbidden Magic. The book begins by emphasizing that with magic things are not black and white. Depending on how it is used, and by who, magic can be benevolent or malevolent, but necromancy is the key exception to this principle. The book says that proponents of this field of magic once suggested that reviving corpses didn't have to be bad. Dead men can, after all, hide secrets which may save the living. It is better to send an army of reanimated corpses into battle than to squander the life of those in whose veins hot blood still flows. Moreover, a revived soldier may be reused many times, until such members are chopped off so as to make his flesh unusable. We get the idea of what necromancy advocating sorcerers were getting at, and in theory you can't really argue with their logic. If we were dealing with the way necromancy is portrayed in many other forms of fantasy, using corpses as brainless zombies to carry out less desirable tasks would be rather ingenious, if you could deal with disrespecting the dead of course. But in the Witcher universe, we see that necromancy is not nearly so simple. Even when extremely powerful sorcerers carry out the magic, it is not pleasant in the slightest. Most of you who have played The Wild Hunt will be familiar with Geralt and Yennefer's journey to Freya's garden. A dead man nicknamed Craven had died in an under underground cavern beneath the sacred tree. In order to extract information from the dead man, Yennefer is forced to use necromancy, and the results are haunting. The spell does not magically rejuvenate the dead man, instead he writhes in pain, as if his central nervous system has just clicked back on, exposing him to unthinkable pain that has compounded over the time he has been dead. Once the human body endures enough suffering, the body shuts down and the person dies, freed at last from their pain. But just imagine that, despite your body's attempts to end its pain, some alien force is denying you that right. We see that through Craven. We see torment that defies all laws of nature. When the spell is cast, the light drains from the sky, as if the world wishes to withdraw consent from what is about to happen. And when Craven sits up, his voice resonates from his decaying lips, echoing as if travelling all the way from the afterlife at Yennefer's summons. All the while the corpse thrashes in agony. The other example of necromancy being carried out this way is very similar. This time it is in the story, The Road With No Return. We see Geralt's mother, Visenna, perform the spell while travelling with Corin, who is rumoured to be Geralt's father. 
Ah! A hoarse tumescent cry sounded from the undergrowth. The corpse bent, almost levitated, touching the ground with its back and head. The cry faded, turned into a throaty stammer. Broken sighs and screams, which slowly gained tonality but were utterly incomprehensible. Corin felt a stream of cold sweat on his back, irritating him like a creeping caterpillar. He balled his fists to suppress the tingling in his hands, and with all his might fought the overwhelming urge to flee into the depths of the forest. The corpse stammered while it clawed the ground with its fingernails, blisters of blood welling out of its mouth and bursting on its lips. I think these examples speak for themselves, and with them in mind, the arguments set forth by defenders of necromancy in the magic community seem laughable. The proposition that these things could be made useful is absurd. Maybe the practice can be refined if mages are given free license to study necromancy, but at what cost? Hen Gedimdaif was the oldest living mage in the Brotherhood of Sorcerers before the Faned coup, and he claimed that the revived dead are always unpredictable, and reviving them always involves entirely negative side effects. In other words, no matter how noble a mage's motives might be, necromancy will always lead to evil. It seems that in this way the gods let us know we should not transgress the laws they have given us, and even the conclave must respect the will of the gods. Such strong words from such an influential mage was enough to establish a unanimous consensus on the forbidden subclass of magic. But evidently, it is still carried out in certain circumstances, and we can still have a conversation about whether necromancy is evil. An important point to consider in the Witcher universe is that the presence of ghosts is not too peculiar. There are countless examples of spectres emerging from their graves to engage with the living. Some instances are pleasant or humorous, like showing Vladimir von Everick the time of his life. Or how about the married couple in the Lebioda Temple Cemetery in Beauclair, preserving the stereotype of bickering spouses even after death. Then we have some less pleasant examples of wraiths and spirits left to linger in the tangible world as the result of some cruel curse. Whatever the circumstances may be, interacting with the dead in this context is not quite so forbidden, and that is where we're free to speculate given how little we know about necromancy. It seems that when a spectre lingers in the mortal world by choice, quarrelling with loved ones or haunting those who've wronged them, nothing is amiss. However, when a soul has already passed to the afterlife and has committed itself to eternal rest, disturbing it from said rest could be where the problem lies. It is degrading and against the quite ambiguous laws of nature in the Witcher universe. When mortals meddle with such forces, playing God by deciding who lives and who dies, everything ends in evil, as Hen Gedimdaif said. When Yennefer reanimated Craven, who we now know to be Skjall, she rendered his very essence from its resting place. The body that was to become a part of the soil was momentarily taken from Mother Nature's grasp. The other key difference between necromancy and the presence of spectres is the use of the mortal vessel. A ghost is not going to feel pain because it is simply the soul or consciousness of the person leaving an imprint on the world, but with necromancy the consciousness is being trapped in its decomposing body, forced to feel its cold shriveled skin, forced to lick its parched lips, and through all of that it is used as a puppet to be discarded once again. During her performance, Yennefer assures Geralt that it seemed real, but it was no longer human. You can interpret this in a variety of ways. If you were inclined to believe the sorceress, maybe the soul of Skjall wasn't even involved. Maybe it was simply an imprint of him left behind after death. Like muscle memory, perhaps Yennefer's magic activated memories left in the rotting brain without actually disturbing Skjall's consciousness, but at the same time it could just as easily have been Yennefer attempting to appease Geralt's sense of empathy. So I think that is why necromancy is so different from the presence of spectres. But there are also plenty of points to make about why necromancy is so immoral. Meddling with the powers of nature isn't inherently evil, but in human society the dead is veiled in much superstition and reverence. That is why we have cemeteries and burial rites. Whether Yennefer is wrong or right about the inhumanity of the reanimated corpse, one thing is undeniable. The deed was incredibly disrespectful and very intrusive. In order to find Ciri, they stole information from the dead man without his permission, and that is not even the worst example of necromancy being used to invade the psyche of a dead man. During the events of the Assassin of Kings, the mage named Deathmold performed a spell called Han Marvin's Blue Dream to allow Geralt to relive the most recent memories of a dead soldier, and you can see how this necromantic ritual can be considered extremely irreverent to the people of the Witcher world. Yennefer is notorious for reading Geralt's mind all the time. Sorcerers are known for doing such things, but no one bats an eye at that. However, reading the mind of a dead person? 
Well, that is plain wrong. Such is the nature of humanity. Morality aside, necromancy can be easily abused. Yes, it could prevent living men and women from dying in the wars of the nobility, but the idea of having brain-dead slaves who obey every order is hardly a viable solution. Whichever way you look at it, necromancy is synonymous with abuse. If the soul of the dead person is in fact summoned and forced to endure great suffering, then necromancy is far too torturous and immoral to be legal. And if the soul is not present and the thing is just an inhuman zombie, then yes, that is going to be abused quicker than you can say fancy a round of Gwent. You can understand why everyone is in agreement when it comes to necromancy. The Brotherhood of Sorcerers have an understanding of the power and can see how it could be abused. The theologians, like the Church of the Eternal Fire, consider it a means of meddling with forces beyond mortal jurisdiction, thus making it heresy. And the common people, who revere their dead in order to help cope with the loss of life, would not be able to bear the thought of seeing their loved ones plucked from the earth to plague the land as mindless zombies. The only silver lining I can think of is when the act is carried out in desperate times. When Yennefer reanimated Craven, she learned essential information about Ciri, and he even had the chance to clear his name, passing on word that he was no Craven and was instead Skjal, who fought and died a hero. But even this positive example came at the cost of undignifying pain, and the rare positive applications of necromancy simply would not compensate for the horrors that the practice being made legal would bring. And there you have it guys. Is necromancy evil in the Witcher universe? I hope you enjoyed this speculative piece about one of the more mysterious facets of Witcher lore. Spells and sorcery are so ambiguous in this series, and it is in this ambiguity that the magic lies. The more you know about it, the less mystical it becomes, and it's really interesting to see how such a force impacts the world. Sorcerers may be the key to the advancement of art, philosophy, and science, but in the case of something like necromancy, laws and restrictions must be put in place. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and if you liked the video, consider showing your support with a like. Once again, I've been Drew, and I'll see you in the next one.